All right, so in case you weren't here this morning, tonight's sermon is a continuation of this morning's sermon. And um, there's a lot of biblical principles that we're going to be covering, so it's not like you had to hear this morning in order to understand what's going on tonight. And the title of my sermon from this morning is The Sins of Social Media. And it's just a really big topic, and there's a lot of things that, that you can get yourself involved with online that are not right, that are not of God, that are sinful actions. And I'm just kind of taking the time to go over a lot of those different things that, that can influence or affect you and that you might end up becoming a part of and, uh, and falling into these traps. So I'm trying to expose them as much of this as possible. It's a part of most people's lives, not everybody, but um, either way, these principles and these, these biblical truths need to be heard and need to be remembered and, and uh, meditated on to make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do and that we're living a life that is upright in the sight of the Lord. Now, um, I'm kind of picking up in the middle of my sermon from this morning, but this morning I just was going over a lot of the generalities of how the, um, the online world is literally like, it's like, you know, the cyberspace is this whole alternate reality almost because people behave different. There's virtual everything online. I mean, you, you have these discussions and these groups and these you know, whatever. There, there's, there's all kinds of things going on and people kind of behave themselves differently and present themselves differently. Um, it, it's a whole nother world out there. And it's almost like it has a lot of the worst of just of, of sinful nature kind of comes up and, and gets, gets even gets magnified online. I don't know. I mean, um, but anyways, we're, I'm not going to get into all that. One thing I do, I, mean, I forgot to mention this this morning because it wasn't in my notes, but it was something I intended on bringing up. Um, I view the internet and I view these social media sites. I mean, it, it, it's fake. It's not real. So like on Facebook, for example, you can have, you have friends, right? Well, I don't know how many friends I have on Facebook. It's a lot. Just being a pastor, you know, people request friends and, and many times I'll go through and I'll just add, 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 because I don't really care. Because I don't, you know, whatever happens on Facebook, what people say or whatever, like if people want to follow me, you're not following much. Andy, I'll tell you that much right now because I don't really get on and post a lot and anything anyways. So if you're following me and you're friends with me, great. I don't really care that much about the platform, but no offense to anyone in here, if you're my Facebook friend, it doesn't mean that much if you're my Facebook friend. I'll tell you that right now. It's not some great status that you could have. I don't view it as anything. And the reason why I'm even bringing this up is because some people look to these places with so much, like, like they care about it so much. I mean, people have these groups and there's all these rules and everything else to follow and it's just kind of like, this, this isn't a fellowship. This is internet. This is like a chat room. Like you, just, you, you type things or whatever. But I'm worried that I think some people start substituting these groups and all these online, you know, it's this online fellowship. It's like, no, we need to have real fellowship. You really do need, you know, if you're spending all this time and this is where you get all of your interaction with people and, and, and everything else, and it's all online, you're missing a lot. You're really missing a lot. I mean, real contact and real interaction with people is way more edifying and do a lot more for you than spending hours typing back and forth to people on the internet, even if you know them personally. Use that time to just have real interactions with people. You know, people get all bent out of I've been made admin of all these groups and stuff, and you know what I do? Nothing. Because I don't really care. If someone posts something stupid, I'm not kicking them out of play. You know, I don't care. It, to me, I just look at it it's like it's the internet. Of course people are going to be saying stupid things. Of course there's going to be a lot of nonsense up there. Whatever. Now, if someone's posting disgusting things that I don't want to ever have to see, yeah, I'm going to block them or unfriend them or whatever because I don't want that being shown in front of my eyes. 
But like, if I don't, you know, if someone's a heretic and then you find them in my friends list, like, that doesn't mean anything. I'm just telling you that right now. Because I'm not like keeping up to date on all, well, this person, does, you know. It doesn't mean that much. So I'll make sure everyone understands, at least when it comes to me, I don't really care. And I don't view it as something that matters much at all. I like the platform to be able to use it to get a message out. That's what I like about it. And I like for people to be able to keep up with our church. You know, we could post church events and kind of get information to people. That's great. And you know what? Use these methods however, you know, use these platforms however you want to. But I'm just telling you, you know, don't get too wrapped up in them either. Don't let this become like your life or, or get so wrapped up into these social media things. Spend your time wisely. And we'll be getting to that a little bit later in, in, in the sermon, just, just using your time and not wasting your time. Because as fun and as cool as some of these things might be, you'll, you'll often find out it, it ultimately it turns out to be a waste of time or at least not a very good use of your time. You want to fellowship with people. And I, you know, I feel bad for people who are in areas or locations where you don't really have a good church to go to. You don't really have other like-minded believers to fellowship with. But I'll tell you what, you're going to be way more edified if you're able to find a way to, to get up and move and be part of a congregation of people who are like-minded way more. You're going to get way more out of that than you will by just hanging out on groups online. And when you're just trusting the online persona and you don't really know the person, you still don't even know who you're really talking to. I've been in other churches and I've seen people where it's like, yeah, they have this huge online presence. And you would think that that is super Christian because they post all this stuff and they're real hard hitting and stuff. But then when you actually go to church that they attend, it's kind of like, where are they? They're almost never there. And look, I don't care enough to even, I'm not naming any names, but I just, I've seen this. I've witnessed this. I've witnessed this firsthand. So what you think you know about somebody, just because you see all this stuff online, you know what, that's what they're projecting. That might be who they want to be, but it's not necessarily who they are. Just be aware of that. Just be aware that, that oftentimes what you're seeing is not reality. And it's another one of the reasons why I don't spend much time on these places because I'm not interested in, in fakeness and in, in, in things that are not real. But I'm picking up where I left off. I went, I went a really in depth this morning on the whole gossiping aspect of social media. Because I think that's one of the most damaging sins of social media. And that's why I kind of went after that first and spent the majority of the sermon on that is because it really is a shame when you have good, godly people who get involved with gossip. Gossip, backbiting, and we're going to get a little bit more along similar lines into railing and slander and just strife, right? Now, look, I get it. We're in a spiritual battle. Absolutely. There's a spiritual war going on, and we need to stand up for the truth, and we need, you know, we need to, to do so righteously, But we also need to be wise and not just getting involved in every little skirmish with just some person on the internet. Just some random guy or some random lady that's just, you don't need to do that. You don't need to set everybody straight on the internet. Because if you do that, you'll never get offline and you're never going to accomplish that task. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But the internet said, yeah, I know. <laughs> it says a lot of things. There were, you know, a, a long time, a long time ago, I used to think that, that I would use my time really wise. You know, I thought I was using my time wisely because, you know, I really, I was really zealous. I was fired up about the things of God. It was earlier in my, in my Christian walk and, and, you know, doing soul winning and listening to the Bible and all this stuff. And there's a lot of new knowledge coming. I'm just understanding a lot more. And just out of zeal, wanting to talk doctrine and try to convert people and try to, to persuade people on doctrine and all this stuff. And, but it didn't take me very long to find out that 
on the internet, just typing comments or messages back and forth is probably one of the least effective ways in the world to convince somebody that they're wrong on doctrine. <laughs> you will end up wasting so much time trying to convince somebody just typing back and forth. I can't tell you how many times, con I, you could even see it, conversation just jump around. What about this and this and this? And you never ever get like to one just consensus on a topic. Whereas if you're talking to someone, one, you can talk a lot faster than you can type. So you don't have to spend, you know, eight hours on one topic that you could have gotten done in 30 minutes in a, in a conversation. But it's just, it's just not that fruitful. But anyways, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We started in 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm going to read for you from 1 Corinthians chapter 5 because 1 Corinthians chapter 5 has that list of sins that is worthy of people being kicked out of church. If you're considered a brother and you commit these sins, that is bad enough to be kicked out of church. And, uh, and you stay in 1 Timothy 6, 1 Corinthians 5, 11 says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one know not to eat. So railing, when you're bringing up railing accusations against someone, when you're despising and, ju and just um, trying to think of a good synonym for railing. I mean, it's, uh, railing and railing accusations kind of go together in Scripture. You're going to find those two kind of be brought together. But you think about slandering people and just bringing them, you know, bringing their name down. That's a serious sin. And again, we, we need to take the entire Bible in context and understand that there are some exceptions to a point like when you're when you're calling out a false prophet right we saw with elijah when he was when he was mocking the the priests of baal right and, and he was saying oh you know they're cutting themselves and everything else like oh why don't you scream a little bit louder maybe you gotta wake him up or maybe you know and, he, and he's he's kind of you know razzing them on on their false god as he's defending and supporting the true God and they all are, are worshipers of Satan, right? I don't think that was sinful what he was doing. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that was in that context. But when you go around, and again, in this list, it's not like you commit one sin one time of like wanting something, right? That doesn't automatically just make you a covetous person. Right? That's something that kind of identifies more of the type of person that you are. You, you, you do one thing wrong. It's not just all of a sudden, oh, yeah, man, you're just so covetous because you wanted one thing that, that you shouldn't have wanted. Something you couldn't afford or whatever. Right? And again, it's still a sin to want something you can't have. But that doesn't necessarily define kind of who you are. And that's what these qualities are about. Talking about, hey, someone... You know, they're just, they are just covetous. They are an idolater, right? They're, they're a railer. This is something that, that is, is what they do. That's a serious sin. And it was such a one, the Bible says, no, not to eat. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 3. The Bible says, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions, and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such, withdraw thyself. This is talking about the type of person who's going to get involved in things. So it's, it says, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness, verse number three, this is the type of person who's not accepting sound doctrine. This is the type of person who's not accepting the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says that people like that, they're proud. They're puffed up in their own mind. They're not accepting sound doctrine. They're heretics. The Bible says they know nothing. But you know what they like doing? They like doting about questions and strifes of words. They like nitpicking at certain words and just making these big fights and arguments over this one little word, right? 
well, did you know that in the Greek, this word, mean, you know, and just do it, just whatever. And, and getting into these big arguments, it says, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings. So these same people are going to be involved then in railing as well. And then it says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. They don't know the truth. They're destitute of the truth. So we're going to get from such withdraw thyself. Don't get involved with these people at all. Don't get involved with them online because you know what? There's a lot of them online that are destitute of the truth. They don't accept good doctrine. You know what? You're probably not going to be able to help them out with that. The same way that you would take the, ver the scripture that says, you know, a man that isn't heretic after the first and second admonition reject in Titus, you should also apply that to whatever it is that you end up doing online as well. You know, if someone's a heretic, don't waste all your time trying to convince them that, you know, of, of good doctrine. Let, this, let these verses sink in. Don't get caught up in the strife and the doting about questions and then that which, which will end up turning into railings and, and, and these fights and stuff. It's a waste of your time. It's, it's unfruitful. It's profitable for nothing. And the goal is literally just to get you to waste your time. Flip over to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to see some more of this same, uh, the similar concept. 2 Timothy chapter 2, look at verse 11. The Bible says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So this is talking about people here uh, very simple doctrine again, starting in verse 11, where we started reading, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. Very simple, few verses there, straightforward doctrine. And he says, if these things put them in remembrance, that people don't strive about words to no profit, to the subverting of the hearers. We don't need to be getting in fights about, about specific words here to no profit on very simple doctrines like we see here. And then it continues to say, but shun profane and vain babblings. Shun, don't have anything to do with them. When people have profane, I mean, people are profaning the Lord or just having vain babblings, just meaningless nonsense, don't even get involved with that. Don't mess with that. There's no reason, there's no point. He says, in fact, that just increases unto more ungodliness. Not only is it not going to do you any good, it's just going to increase unto more ungodliness. Just shun it. Have, shunning means you have nothing to do with it. Shutting the door to that. I'm not going to let that waste my time. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of son. That's why Hymenaeus and Philetus, they were just shunned. Say so we're not gonna, gonna invest all of our time trying to debate these guys and argue with them. We're just gonna shun them. Because the more time we give them, the more energy, it's just gonna increase unto more ungodliness. I mean, that's the context of what's being said here. Uh, jump down to verse number 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. Over and over again, you're going to see that we're not supposed to be getting in these stupid fights and strifes and argument. You know, that's not what we're here for. It's not. We're not here to get in arguments and get into fights with people. Now we're in a spiritual battle, but we're not here just to get in individual fights, especially with fools and vain babblers and people are just talking nonsense. That is not what we're here for. We're not here to put here to win arguments. We're here to win souls to Christ. That's our job. And this is, that's the main reason why we want to be a vessel unto honor. Why? Because we can be used by the Father even more. 
For what purpose? To lead more people to Christ. That is the end goal. Everything that we do is about being that servant of the Lord, being the best reaper that you can be, being the best workman that you can be to go out and, and continue to, to reap the harvest. That's why we're here. To remember that main goal. And don't get so lifted up in yourself and in pride thinking that, well, I'm going to, you know, show this guy a thing or two and I'm going to, you know, get wrapped up into their vain babbling and think that you're going to convince them. You're just going to waste your time. You give them one admission and you give them two admonitions and then you reject them. If they're not willing to listen, if they're not willing to hear, it's not on you. We don't need to be getting involved with these foolish, unlearned questions. He says, just avoid them. Because all you're going to do, if you, if you don't avoid them, if you just say, oh, I'm going to tackle this head on. I know it's a foolish question, but it's got so, you know, it just gender strifes. You're just going to end up arguing and fighting over it for no reason. It's a waste of time. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. This is the spirit and the attitude that we're supposed to have when we're teaching and instructing people. It's not an attitude of, you know, authoritarian, you're wrong, you know, you're going out, yes, you're, you're wrong, this is, you know, whatever, and bringing up these fights and these battles. This is talking about people who are in the snare of the devil. They're wrong. They have bad doctrine. They are caught up. They're in a trap. But the way that you reach them is not by starting fights with them. It's not by going into all their vain babblings. It's meekly and humbly trying to instruct them because they oppose themselves. Oftentimes what you'll see in comments and things on social media is people who don't have that spirit. People have more of an attacking type of spirit on, on people who don't know any better. And again, this goes back to part of the problem of oftentimes people, you don't even know who you're talking to. You don't even know their situation. You don't even know if someone's a brand new believer and they're just saying something stupid because they don't know. Because they've never learned. Because they've never been taught. It doesn't make them a bad person. It doesn't mean you have to go and start railing on them. It doesn't mean you have to go after them and start attacking them and fighting them. What it means is that you just need to have a humble, meek spirit and try to offer some truth. Oftentimes you get engaged in these battles and all of a sudden you just want to start fighting everybody. I know that there's some enemies out there. I know there's some people doing a lot of damage to the cause of Christ. Fight those people, that's fine. We don't lay up or take it easy on someone who's really deserving of a rebuke. But not everybody on the internet who's throwing out an opinion on things just always needs to just be, oh man, you need to be brought down. You need a rebuke. I'm going to, you know, it just turns into all this fighting. It's not profitable. And, and I, I've seen this way too much and, and it's disturbing. And I'm not talking specifically about anyone in here. I don't even know, like, to be honest with you, I don't even know how many of you get on social media because I'm really on it that little. Like I see a little bit and, and I try to find just, just videos, usually from like other churches and stuff or an article or something I want to read. And that's about it. I don't really keep up with what everybody's doing. So, um, but I, I'll say this, just like I said this morning, because this isn't intended against anybody in particular in our church at all or anyone in particular at all for that matter. This is just an overall general theme that I've seen online that's, that is kind of is kind of trou is, is troubling. And I think it's hurtful for the cause of Christ. I really do think it is. 
there's so many people that are just getting too caught up into, into the battle and the fight that they, they're starting to fight everybody. Or at least that's the perception that's being put off. And that's not a good perception. And I know not everybody's doing that, definitely, but the people who are need to get right. And if the shoe fits, then, then wear it. I mean, correct it. Get it right. Let, let's not forget the overall attitude that we ought to have as believers, as disciples of Jesus Christ. Are you following Christ? Are you a soul winner? Is that, is that how you would look at yourself? Are you trying to do what Christ did? Now, are there times when Jesus got angry and flipped over tables? Sure. Are there times when Jesus rebuked and called people out and called people serpents and vipers? Absolutely. I'm not projecting that Jesus was the pacifist, hippie-looking dude that, that Hollywood's going to make him out to be. But at the same time, he also wasn't walking around with a sword and, and ready to cut people's heads off at every drop of a hat. He had a lot of love for people. And he tried to instruct people. And he dealt with some very sinful people. And still, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't excusing them or their sin, but he also was offering wisdom and offering help, and it was up to them to take it or not. He didn't sugarcoat anything, and we ought not to sugarcoat, but you can still be humble and meek about it. That's the right way. The, the way, it's not just what you say, the way that you do things matters. If, if you're going to have any success in, in actually reaching people, because that's, don't forget, that's the goal. I think sometimes people have a goal of just bringing other people down to make themselves feel better, and that's wicked. Don't get so caught up in thinking you're so righteous that you're just going to bring everyone else down and have no... Uh, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith. You know, you, know what the, you know where you get that from? You get that from walking in the Spirit. It's not just hard line all the time and have no compassion and no mercy and no long-suffering. You know what? If that's you, then you're not walking in the Spirit. There are situations where you have to take the strong line. Like when the man of God that's in this position of authority does something extremely wicked and needs to be called out for it. Yeah, we're not compromising on that. We're not going soft on our stand. Or just like when the Bible says when someone's guilty of the death penalty or something, they say, you know, we're not going to take pity on that person. Justice needs to be carried out. Yes, amen and amen. But at the same time, at the same time when you're not going to compromise on those things, we still need to have the overwhelming spirit of compassion, love, mercy, forgiveness, humility. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why we're memorizing the, the passage that we're memorizing, Philippians chapter 2, because that defines the spirit that we're supposed to have. And we need to make sure that that is characteristic of who you are. But these days, everybody has an opinion. Turn, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 4. Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone feels like the world just needs to know what I think about this topic. And I can't just let this one go until I give you a piece of my mind. I let everybody know, well, this is what I think about this. Getting involved in the drama, getting involved in all the fights. You know, I, I don't know if it still happens, but I would have people like tagging me in all these things like there are these long threads and there's all these arguments going on and they're like oh i'm going to tag pastor burt you know like like they're calling in the troops to go in and start getting involved in these fights and you know what i don't ever get involved in that so if you tag me in things like that guess what don't expect a response because i don't have time to argue on the internet with people 
I don't. I don't have time for that. The Bible says in Proverbs 26, 17, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Now, if you've never had a dog before, if you've never done this before, you, know, you might not understand this proverb. And I don't recommend actually trying it. But when you take a dog by the ears, you know what? The dog doesn't like that. How do you think a dog's going to respond to you doing something that they don't really like? I'm going to bite you. You're getting involved in strife that doesn't belong to you. You're going to get bit. It's going to come after you. It's going to, you know, this has nothing to do with you. We see that was even the downfall of, um, of one of my favorite Bible characters, King Josiah. Great man of God, did a lot of stuff, but you know what? He ended up getting involved in a fight that wasn't his fight. The word of the Lord even came to him saying, don't get involved here, this isn't your business. But he wanted, he just wanted to get in that fight. I mean, he was like, he fought a lot of great battles, spiritual battles. He got, he was getting things right and getting rid of all the, the Baal worship and all this other nonsense that had been going on. And, and man, he, he had a great spirit and a great attitude, but he just took that a little bit too far and got involved in a fight he shouldn't have messed with and it cost him his life. This is a real example. It really happens. We don't, you don't need to get involved in other people's drama, other people's fights and strivings and battles. Don't insert yourself because it's just like taking a dog by the ears. According to Proverbs. You're in Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse number 29. The Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. People seem to forget this spirit. There's too much corrupt communication proceeding from people's fingertips online. This is saying, is it, you know, you got to think about what you're right. Is it, is it good for edifying? Are you going to minister grace unto the hearers? And when, when you don't have, when you have these attitudes of bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking, and malice, you're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Because as I already mentioned, the, the fruits of the Spirit are the exact opposite of those. And that's why our overall characteristic should be one of compassion. It should be tender-hearted, not hard-hearted, soft. Your heart needs to be softened up, forgiving one another, even as Christ, God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. People make mistakes. People say dumb things. You know, we shouldn't be on a hair trigger to just shun everybody. We are not, you are not perfect. I am not perfect. Now the people that get called out, it's far from being, oh, well, they're not perfect. I mean, these, these grievous sins, like at 1 Corinthians 5, those are big deals. Okay? It's, not, it's not like just some little thing like, oh, you know, I made a mistake, or I didn't know, or I, I had an error in judgment, I just, uh, you know, whatever. But everything else, I mean, look, let's show mercy and, and be long-suffering, especially, especially with people who are new to the faith. Don't go blasting, putting blasting people. And, and how are you even going to know that? If you don't even know someone online, how do you even know? How are you going to discern that? Turn to Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs 17, this is a great verse to memorize. Let 
I need to nail this one down exactly. I don't have it word for word. But I, I do think that this is one of the biggest problems in our modern culture is that people just don't know when to shut up. Literally, I, I believe that. People just don't know when to shut their mouths because everyone just wants to talk. And social media has magnified that. Constantly talking, texting, posting. I mean, th this is happening all day long. People are just, just with this ease of communication, it's just like, whew, open up the floodgates. Now I'm just almost no time to take a break. Give it a rest. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, verse number 28, even a fool... When he holdeth his peace is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. This ain't, you know what? Even the fool, if they're able to just keep their mouth shut, people are going to think that person's wise. Why? Because they're not just letting a bunch of garbage come out of their mouth because they're not just, just going and just having a bunch of nonsense just spew out of their mouth. The fool is known by, you know, um, what, what's the other, you know, it's coming in my mind now, of course I didn't have this in my notes, um, by a multitude of words, a uh, fool is made known by, um, is that right? Or there lacketh not, not sin. Something with a multitude of words. And a multitude of words, there lacketh not sin, or something like that. Ah. Uh, that's in Proverbs. Well, you look that up for me, Brother Carter. Look that up because we're still in Proverbs. Turn, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 8 because I'm going to be shifting gears here. Or in the abundance of words. Read it for me. Yeah. There wanteth not sin. Amen. That's exactly it. That's the verse I was thinking of. Proverbs 10, 19. I'm going to repeat that one. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. That doesn't mean, it means sin is not lacking. In the multitude, when you're just saying a lot of words, guess what? There's going to be something sinful found in there. Sin is not lacking when you're just opening up your mouth and just letting a bunch of words come out. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Just remember that. You don't need to be pouring out your mouth and talking, 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 you know, I'm comment post. What you you're probably getting involved in sin. Just, just chill out for a minute and hold your peace and, and be quick to hear and, and slow to speak. We went over that this morning a little bit. But Proverbs 8, look at verse number 13. Because another thing that, that, I, that is common amongst the, the social media online is um, an attitude of pride and arrogancy and the me, 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 and look at me and being all about me type of an attitude. It's the attitude that's, that you want to show everyone, hey, look what I had for lunch today. Hey, look what I'm doing today. And this whole selfie thing, like, me, me, oh, look at You know, here, here I am, here I am at the beach. My life's awesome. What are you doing, huh? And this whole, I mean, it, it's, it's a proud attitude. It really is. Like, you, you, you I don't care. What are you doing? You go off. I'm working. I'm busy. I got things going on. I'm working and then I'm going soul winning and then, you know, and then I'm reading my Bible. Go ahead. Have fun. But this, this attitude of thinking that, that it's all about you. No, no, no. Proverbs 8.13, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. God hates evil. God hates pride. God hates arrogance. You know, pride and arrogance, he listed right together. They're basically the same thing. Someone who's proud, someone who's arrogant, they're full of themselves. God hates that. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 21, 4, in high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. 
Uh, flip over back to chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. The Bible says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And that word abomination, always take note when the Bible's talking about abomination, because that's an extremely powerful, strong word of, of hatred, where God hates things. If something is abominable, it means it's really, really, really hated. Just like abhor, it's just, it's just a strong word being used. Man, that is an abomination. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination of a proud look. Number one on the list, a proud look, a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. How many proud looks are you seeing on social media? All these selfie pictures and all these stupid poses and this, this whole pride and arrogancy just, just exuding. It's not all about you. It shouldn't be. The mindset that we need to have is found in Philippians chapter 2. You can turn it if you'd like, but hopefully you already have this memorized. Verse number 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. That is the spirit. That is the attitude that we need to have. When you esteem other people better than yourself, it doesn't mean you think of yourself as dirt or as nothing. It just means you're looking of other people as better than you. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Jesus Christ came to this earth to minister, not to be ministered unto, giving us the example. It's not about you. I mean, if it wasn't about Jesus, which everything is about Jesus, right? I mean, he's our Savior. He's our Lord. God in the flesh. If he could come to this earth and say, I didn't come here to have people waiting on me. I came to serve them. Then who do you think you are if you think it's all about you? You think you're better than Jesus? Let's not forget the servant's attitude and heart and mindset in reaching people. That's what we are. That's what we're called to be. Ministers. Servants. Not to rule and reign over the, the, the ignorant believers and come down on them for every little thing. Let's try to help them. Flip over to Ephesians chapter 5. It's the last place we'll look at tonight, Ephesians chapter 5. And I've already kind of touched on this just between this morning and tonight already. But with the, sin, the sins of social media... You may not have a bad attitude. You may not be involved and in getting involved in strives and everything else, right? And I hope that you're not. It, seem, it seems to be prevalent. I see a lot of it in gen, just in, in a general context. But hopefully those things, you know, you're not a gossiper. You're not backbiting and railing and just getting involved in all these, these nasty drama fightings and everything else. That has none of your business anyways, right? I mean, it's one thing if you're right in the middle of something that you're dealing with personally or whatever, but just, just other fights that don't belong to you. But even if you're not involved in any of those things, be careful with your time. Just, just how, how you use your time. I remember... And it's interesting we're out so long today too. I was talking with uh, Barry about, you know, it's about some different things and stuff. And it's like, th this came up just about, you know, video games. He's talking about someone he knows playing video games and stuff. And, and I remember a time when I would spend a lot of time playing some video games. I remember there's a certain game that I would play on my computer that, 
you know, it, from start to finish, it was a really long game. It was like a 10 or a 12 hour game or something like that. And you, you know, you start it like in maybe early afternoon and in the wee hours of the morning, you've kind of finally completed. And I remember like not even like wanting to go and eat and it's just like you just get so wrapped up into this stuff, right? It's almost embarrassing to admit it because it sounds really silly right now, doesn't it? Well, at the time it didn't sound that silly. I was conquering the world, do you understand? In my fake reality that is found on a computer. It doesn't actually exist. But I needed to conquer everybody. And then you spend all that time. And then sometimes it's like I do on a Friday. And then because I stay up so late, it's like you wake up late on a Saturday and you just kind of ruin your whole day. And it's just like, what did I get done? What did I accomplish? Nothing at all. And you got that little bit of entertainment for that time or whatever, but then totally just blue and wasted. It's just like, you don't get that time back. You don't get that time back. That's just such a waste. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. And we read kind of a long passage here, but I wanted to get the whole thing in context, because he's saying, look, don't be partakers with people who are trying to deceive you with vain words and, and don't be partakers with them. And it says, don't have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Reprove them. He says, it's even a shame to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. He's like basically kind of saying, like, don't have anything to do with any of that. Because you don't want to waste your time is kind of the end point. So you're a children of light. You need to walk as a child of light. Awake thou that sleepest. Why? If someone is sleeping, you're not doing anything. God wants us awake. He wants us alert. He wants us active. He wants us walking in the light. We're not children of darkness. We're not, it's not time to sleep and, and go and do nothing and just waste your whole life and waste your time. On the contrary, he's saying, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're already living in evil days. There's a lot of wickedness going on. We need to redeem the time. We need to use the time that we have wisely. Not as fools. What is a fool going to do? They're going to waste their life. They're going to waste their time doing things that are vain and don't matter at all. There is virtually no value to playing the video games that I was playing when I was younger. And likewise, just getting on social media, just this, the, you know, the Facebooks and Twitters and whatever else is out there. I don't even know what all of them are anymore. I know I'm starting to get a little bit older. I'm going to try to keep up with the times, but that's just what happens as you get older. You don't get so much knowledge on all the new things. What's out there? Instagram, right? I'm already, I'm still old, right? What are the newest things? No, no one wants to speak up. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm righteous. I don't have anything to do with that stuff, Pastor Burson. This has nothing to do with me. You know what they are. And they're all wicked. Whatever, whatever all the newest, the newest platforms are, it's still the same thing. Don't waste your time. I mean, look. A little bit of time, a little bit of relaxation. But see, this is also why we do these challenges. Because I even caught myself getting involved in things that are you know, not sinful at all, just, just playing some little 
just a little bit of, of time to, to do something that's not stressful at all, right? And, and I'll, I'll confess my faults today. Right? One of the things that I like doing is playing words with friends, with my friend, my wife. <laughs> okay, we've got a little app where I could play a word and you know what? It's meaningless. There's nothing to it. It's just a little bit of fun. But you know how many times I've played, how many times have I played, well, I'm not going to ask you right now, but I mean, it's still my turn for like the whole month of January. <laughs> you know why? Because I started doing a lot more Bible reading. Because when it comes down to, well, am I going to play this game or am I going to read the Bible? You know I'm going to read the Bible. And we need to push ourselves sometimes because if we didn't have the challenge, you know what, I might just choose, oh, let's play this game real quick. Let's push ourselves. Don't waste your time. I'm not saying everybody who gets on social media is wicked. There's no, you know, just hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying everyone who plays a video game, it's just you're in sin. But use your time wisely because it's so easy to fall in the trap to where before you know it, wow, I've been on this thing for an hour. I've been on this thing for two hours. Then, one, you're not using your time wisely, but you know what that tells me? You have idle time because it really is just idle going through that. And when you have idle time, you better watch out because that is when you're going to get yourself involved in sin. And when you Im immerse yourself in some fake world, this online world, and seeing all these different things, all these, and with, with other people who have a bunch of idle time, not a good combination. I mean, I don't know where I don't know where some people just come up with with the time that's beyond those things all the time. You've seen them, I've seen them. It's like they comment on every single thing. Like, how do you even do that? So I was wondering, do you have a job? Do you work at all? I don't know about you, but like my phone sits on my desk for a long time at work. I don't know. I don't know where people even come up with the time. Don't waste your time on the social media. We need to make sure that we're walking in the spirit. Yes, in real life, in real interactions with people, but you know what? Carry that over to any interactions that you have everywhere. Don't turn into somebody else because you're online, because you have anonymity or, or any other reason. Be true to the principles that you believe and be true to God. Be true to the scripture and, and God's word. Let's bow our eyes have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for all the, the great teachings found in your word. God, I pray that you please help us to be mindful of how we ought to live, how we ought to conduct ourselves no matter what situation we're in, dear Lord, I pray that you please help us all to uh, redeem the time because the days are evil. We don't want to be wasting our time with things that don't matter and get caught up in vain strifes and arguments that, that are totally fruitless and, and meaningless, dear Lord, but that we could get involved in the real battle and um, trying to convert the lost unto Jesus Christ, Lord. Help us in that endeavor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.